Hello Math 9 students and welcome to the first of many video tutorials that we're going to do in the Math 9 course. Uh, I had a parent ask me today if it was a good idea to print off the workbooks or uh, if there was another method that uh, that would work better. Uh, my recommendation is if you have access to a printer that you print off your workbooks, you follow along in pencil. Um, that being said, if uh, if you don't have access to a printer or if you find uh, that you take uh, you learn better taking your own notes feel free to do that uh, take your own notes on just you know plain pieces of uh, full scat paper or, or uh, loose leaf paper paper in a duo tang or a notebook or whatever you're most comfortable with I will be posting all of my uh, video tutorial notes and the work that we're going to be doing on the class website so you will have access to them but um, I find that, that students tend to remember things uh, more effectively if they are actually taking the time to write them down. Your, your brain processes it a little differently in my experience. Um, your assignments from the textbook, by all means, just do them in, your, uh, in a notebook or on paper. And uh, when it comes to hand in assignments and tests and whatnot, uh, I will uh, either have you print them off or do them online, or perhaps we can arrange for uh, print printing off at the school and having you pick up a copy or something like that. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, our first unit is going to be on squares, square roots, and um, surface area. So finding the surface area of objects. I'm going to minimize my webcam window now, and we're going to go to um, my workbook. Uh, I'm going to be using a digital tablet and pen, and I'm, I'm not great with these things, as, as I'm sure you'll see, but I'll do my best. And uh, you'll recognize um, very quickly that what I'm going through in this video tutorial session will be mirrored relatively intact in your workbook with a couple of extra screen, screens I've added on here. So here we go. Um, I've got a blank screen right now because I wanted to just uh, go over maybe a bit of a recall, a little refresh on um, the property of area as it pertains to squares. So if I were to just draw a square, if I can find my uh, square tool here, sorry, if I were to draw, there it is, a square, hopefully one thing we've learned in earlier grades that what a square really means is that this side is the same length as this side is the same length as this side is the same length as this side. So for instance, if this side over here were five units long, it doesn't matter what unit, centimeters, inches, mile, a meter, we also know that this is going to be five, <clears throat> this side's going to be five, and this side's going to be five. That's just what a square is. And if we're computing the area of a square, well, we should remember that area equals length times width. So length times width. However, the length is 5. And the width, we don't use the x for multiplication anymore. We're going to use a dot or brackets. The width or the height or whichever side you pick is also 5. So that being said, our area is 5 times 5, which equals 25 units squared. Okay. Now, I don't know what units we had here. Let's just, for the sake of argument, say that that's a centimeter. So that's a centimeter. So if this is 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters, the resulting area is 25 centimeters squared. We always have to include the squared on there. A different way of writing this middle portion, 5 times 5, hopefully you've seen exponents before in some of your math classes, would be 5 to the power of 2. Okay, 5 to the power of 2 is exactly the same thing as 5 times 5. And we refer to this as taking the square of a number. And that's why I drew a square, because I think we always have to kind of relate the numbers, the fractions, the decimals we see back to a visual rep representation of what a square actually is. And I find that that helps me and that helps students oftentimes kind of get over the, the fear of numbers and the fear of fractions and just bring it back to its simpler form, which is just a box with a side that is as long as it is tall. So this is a fairly simple example. I'm going to draw another rector, another square here, and just take a slightly different approach. 
So I'm just going to draw, <clears throat> excuse me, another square. And then within this square, I'm going to break it into roughly four other squares. All right. So if I look at this object, I think it's pretty clear that there are four squares in here. So it would be fair to say that the area of this particular object would be four units squared. <clears throat> unit just being one of these little boxes. One, two, unit, two, unit, three, unit, four, unit squared. So I think that's pretty obvious. These are squares and the big one is a square. So if I looked at the length of the side, it's pretty easy to see that I've got one, two, or so I guess that'd be the, the width. So it'd be pretty easy to see that I've got two there. And then also I've got two here. So we basically did the same thing we did up here. We just represented it in a slightly different way. And I started with the answer and went backwards to find out that it was two times two. So four units could also be represented as two units times two units, which as I told you in the above example, is just two to the power of two. And whenever anything is to the power of two, we always say it's squared, okay? So we kind of went <laughs> forwards this way and we went backwards this way, but the idea remains the same. The sides have to be the same length. And if you ever have an object where the sides are the same length, Okay, it has to be a square. How do we go from a four to a two? And how do we go from a 25 to a five, right? So that would be sort of working backwards. If we could go forward, we're going five times five or five squared. The way we go backwards is by using something called a square root. And a square root is represented by this sign. You may have seen it before in your readings at school somewhere on your calculator. In fact, you should find it on your calculator because it'll be very handy in this unit. If we can go forward by, uh, by making a square of something, so 5 squared equals 25, which we've already done on the other side, we can also go backwards. Okay, so it's an inverse operation, just like uh, subtraction is an inverse of addition. If I go 5, you know, plus 3 equals 8, I can also go 8 minus 3 equals 5, forward and backwards. They're inverse operations. Multiplication and division are inverse operations. And the one that we're dealing with right now, squaring a number and applying a square root are inverse operations, which means they basically cancel each other out. One goes forward, one goes backwards. So I used multiplication here, or sorry, I used squaring here. 5 to the power of 2 equals 25. If I want to go backwards, I apply that little square root thing. And I just write it over top of the number. And basically what it does is it gets rid of that little square sign. Okay, So we square it to go one way, and then we apply the square root to go the other. So this way, we took a side, a side of 5, and we squared it to get 25, which is our total. And then over here, we started with our total, which is 25, and we applied the square root to get back to the original five. And it's gonna work on the bottom part here too. Okay, if we look at this one that's got the, you know four units squared in there, well, we started with two units on one side and then two units on the other side, two times two or two squared. I should probably write that as two squared considering that's what we're actually dealing with in this particular unit of study. So two squared equals four. And if I want to go backwards with the inverse operation, I'll write the square root of 4 equals 2. So we go forward to make the square number, and we can take the square root to get back to the side. So that's just an example of how we go from side to area and from area back to side. And it'll work with whatever uh, uh, numbers you use as long as as long as they're perfect squares, which we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about in a second. All right, now to the part that may be a little bit more frightening, but it doesn't need to be. The reason I drew this as four square units is I can use 
uh, one of these boxes to demonstrate it using a fraction. So I think we can agree that there are four boxes in here, just like we did with this equation or with this example here. But what if I just kind of shaded in one of these boxes? Well, in that case, if I look at just what's shaded in this whole box, how many boxes are shaded on the length? Well, one out of two is shaded on the length. That's a fraction. And how many of these boxes are shaded when we go up and down for the width? Well, same thing, one out of two. And we know that area is just length times width for a square or side squared. So one over two times one over two, hopefully you remember some mathematics with regard to multiplying fractions. And what you're gonna find when you multiply fractions is you have to go tops by tops, bottoms by bottoms. So that's the numerator on this side times the numerator. One times one, well, that's pretty simple. That's just one. And then on the bottom or the denominator, two times two is four. Now let's look back at the original. How many of those boxes are shaded and how many are total? Well, we've got one box shaded out of four total. So we've used fractions to represent a perfect square. The one box that's shaded out of four. And we can write this a different way. So you may see it written like this. It may be written as, and usually you see it with a bracket, one over two, squared like that it means the exact same thing anytime you've got something in brackets to the power of two it just means this times itself so one over two times itself so it's the exact same thing now i told you that you could use the square root sign to go backwards okay, and find the side length so if we start with the total which in this case we said there was one <clears throat> box colored out of four, right? One box colored out of the four total. We can use the square root of this fraction to get back to the side. Whenever you see a fraction under a square root sign, what you have to do is you have to take the square root of the top and of the bottom. So this is really written, and I always write it this way, just so I never forget that I have to do the square root of both the top and the bottom. So if I see the square root of one over four, I write it as the square root of one over the square root of four. Now, what two numbers, okay? We always gotta have, if we're gonna figure out what a square root is, we have to find out two numbers that multiply to give us this. There's only two numbers that we can multiply to give us one. One times itself, right? So the square root of one is just one. That one is pretty easy. Let's look at four. I'm just gonna draw a little arrow here for the four. There's only two ways. Remember, we have to use multiplication. There's only two ways that we can make the number four using multiplication. We could do one times four. And remember, the order of, of, of multiplication doesn't matter. It could be four times one as well. We could do one times four to get four using multiplication, or we could do two times two. And then we're only dealing with integers here. We're not dealing with, you know, uh, I'm not going to multiply 8 times 1 over 2. We're just dealing with integers. Well, clearly, as with every other example here, if we're dealing with squares and square roots, it has to be the same number. Here it was 2 times 2, and in this example it was 5 times 5. So 1 times 4, those aren't the same numbers, so those ones aren't going to work, so it has to be 2 times 2. So what's the square root of 4? It's 2. Because okay? 2 multiplied by itself will give us 4. So the final answer here is going to be 2. So the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. Which means if we've gone backwards properly, we started with 1 out of 4, which was how many were shaded. Now let's see if what we got as an answer is indeed the length and the width. When we can see it is. This is 1 out of 2. Okay, so 1 out of 2, or 1 over 2 as a fraction, means the same thing. And if we look at the width, it's also 1 out of 2. So we found that even if we have a fraction, if we apply the square root principle, we get the side. So it doesn't matter if it's a fraction or if it's an integer. And even if it's a decimal, we'll do a decimal later, a square is a square. Okay, the sides have to be the same length. 
You can go forward by squaring the number or taking it to the power of two, and you can get back to the side by square rooting it or square rooting it. So that's just sort of a quick intro to squares and area, and hopefully most of that's review for you. If I go to my next slide, this uh, you should recognize from the textbook. It's not in your workbook, but I've posted the entire uh, uh, first chapter of the textbook online. So this is 1.1 in your textbook, just to kind of get us oriented on where we are in the book. Okay. This is not in your workbook as well. It's just another example of what I was talking about earlier. If indeed um, there are 10 blocks here and 10 blocks here, you can count them, trust me, they're there. Well, if we were to find the total area of all of the blocks, white and shaded, we would do 10 times 10 equals 100. Hopefully that's reasonably clear, 10 times 10 equals 100. But in this case, they don't have all of the blocks shaded in. They've only got these ones shaded in, and there's a row here and a row here. So let's look at what this looks like as a fraction and as a decimal. Now, I think you'll agree with me. If we look at this first box, there's one. Draw here. Why am I not drawing? There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, out of ten. Nine out of ten of those boxes are shaded. So let's represent this side as nine out of ten. And I'm thinking, because this is a perfect square, it looks like a perfect square. There should be nine this way as well. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Excellent. So that side could also be represented as nine shaded squares out of 10 total. So if we want to find what this shaded region is, what the area is, the area is just going to be nine over 10 times 9 over 10, and I could represent that as 9 over 10 squared if I wanted to use a bracket. Multiplication of fractions, tops times tops, okay, so 9 times 9 is 81. Check your calculator if you don't believe me. I'm A-OK -okay with the use of calculators. They're always going to be in your pocket. We might as well use them, but it's important you understand what's going on behind the scenes as well. 10 times 10, right, so bottoms times bottoms, den denominators times denominators is 100. Now, this number should make sense to us based on what we see in the picture, and I think you'll find it does. If you were to count up all of these shaded squares, you're going to find there's 81 of them. So if you count up all the squares, including the white ones, you'll find there's 100 of them. So how many are shaded, or what's the area of the shaded part? 81 out of 100. 81 out of 100 can also be represented as a decimal. If you go to your calculator, and you type in 81, divide by 100, what you're going to get is 0 decimal 81. So 0 decimal 81 is also a perfect square. It's exactly the same as 81 over 100. It's just written slightly differently. We could write it another way, too. We could also write this as 81%. Okay. And I think you could probably, most of us could probably look at this and say, well, how much of that what percent of that edge of that do you think is shaded? And most of us would say, eh, it's probably about 80% shaded. Well, in fact, it's exactly 81% shaded. So we can represent as a fraction, as a decimal, or as a percentage. In this particular unit, we're going to focus mostly on uh, the decimals, the fractions, and integers or whole numbers. This second example is just meant to show you a decimal. If this whole thing is one unit, even though it's broken up into little squares, each one of those little squares would be like one-tenth of a unit. So this would really be 0 decimal 9, okay, or 9 out of 10 of the squares, and it would be the same thing on this side. Well, guess what? If you do the math, you're going to get the exact same thing we got over here. And if you look at the pictures side by side, it would make sense, right? It's got the exact same area shaded. It's the exact same... Uh, you know, shape, it's a square, they're side by side, they look the same. It was just a slightly different way of showing you the same thing. Instead of saying this is 10 units, they said this is one. So each one of these little squares would be zero decimal one or one over 10. So the same principle, just kind of shown two different ways. This is the first thing you're going to see in your workbook. So um, we're going right to fractions because uh, grade 9 math, grade 10 math, you need to know your fractions. So we're going to work with them. Um, this 
square. I mean, it looks like a square. Eh? It, you know, most of the time you can just look at something and say, yeah, that's, that's a square. Well, indeed it is a square, but it's 15 over 10 units. And that looks a little crazy, but I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of show it just a little bit differently. It's all shaded in, but let's just say that before this object was what it was, let's just say the original looked something like this. I got to get this right here. Uh, there we go. Let's just say that the original is this square. If the original was that square, we should be able to count, and hopefully there's 10, 10 units in there. So let's just have a look and see. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, thank goodness, ten. And then if I go down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I've convinced myself if this was the original section, there are ten across the top, there are ten going down, so there should be a hundred units in this. However, they gave us extra. They gave us five extra on the outside here, and they gave us five extra down here. So instead of ten, Okay, they gave us 15. So we're going to represent this whole side from the top to the bottom. We'll call that, you know, whatever that's the width. Instead of being 10, there was 15 over 10. So 15 out of 10. They gave us too many. And then on this side, it's the exact same thing. It's a square, right? So here we've also got, let's draw a little arrow to that. We've also got 15 over 10. Okay. So we're using fractions, but it's still a square and it still has sides. So we've got these 15 units out of the original 10. We've got these 15. How many are shaded? We have to find the square. So if we look over here, we've got 15 over 10 in brackets squared. Remember that anything inside, anything inside the brackets, the square applies to. And for fractions, okay, you'll usually see them inside brackets because you have to remember, you have to square the top and the bottom. Taking the square of something means just multiplying it by itself. It doesn't matter if it's a two, if it's a four, if it's a decimal, if it's a fraction. If you see something squared, you got to multiply it by itself. So we're taking 15 over 10 times itself. We're going to try and get away from using the X for multiplication. We're going to use a dot. Okay? And the uh, reason for that is because you're going to see X as a variable very soon, and you've probably seen it already in elementary, so we don't like to get that confused. We're going to use the dot. So 15 over 10 squared is 15 over 10 times 15 over 10. Bring out your calculator. Hopefully we're going to memorize these soon enough. 15 times 15 is 225. 10 times 10 is 100. So the area is 225 over 100 square units. If you were to take the time, I don't recommend you do it because it does work out. You counted every single one of these little squares in this whole drawing. You'll find that there's 225 of them. So there's 225 shaded little squares. But if this original square that I drew here represented the original 100, okay, we actually ended up with 225 out of the original 100, more than we started with, which is why you have the 100 on the bottom. You can also... As we know, take this number backwards. Let's say they gave us an answer of the area is 225 over 100 square units, and it asks us, how long is this side? We could go opposites. We could say the side equals the square root, remember that sign, of 225 over 100. I didn't draw my square root sign quite big enough. It needs to go down a little bit further. Okay, and remember, I always recommended that you break this up into the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. So you never forget that you have to do the square root of the denominator as well. Okay, the square root of 225, go ahead, do it on your calculator. I dare you. It's going to be 15, and the square root of 100 is going to be 10. Okay, so it did indeed give us the side. We went forward to get the area. And then we use the square root to go backwards to get the side. So you can go one way or the other, depending on well, how much information you have and what type of information you have. So to determine the length of a square, we calculate the square root of its area. So this is just demonstrating. It's just, it's just repeating what I did on the previous page with a different set of numbers. So this time, they didn't tell us how long this side was or how long this side was. They went right to the answer and they said, all of these squares represented, all these squares together represent 169 out of 100. You can go count all these squares if you want. I guarantee you're going to get 169. Okay. 
And we also know that there was an original square in there that was, <clears throat> that was 100. Okay. They've given us more again than we had in what was a, you know, the original drawing at some point. The point of this one is we are going to work backwards. They, they want to find out how much the side is. This is what we're trying to find out right here. But they didn't give us any other information that then other than that there are 169 out of 100 square units here. Well, we know that we can go backwards to get the side by using the square root sign. So you can see it's done right here. The square root of 169 over 100. Some people like to write it out like this because they like to remind themselves that when you're doing a square root, it has to be one number times itself. Again, I'm going to just turn that into a dot. Okay. I usually skip this step. If you want to do it, that's fine. I usually just skip the step. I just make sure that I write this as root 169. By the way, root is just a different way of saying square root over root 100. Just so I remember that I have to apply that big square root sign to both the top and the bottom. Okay. If you plug it in on your calculator, or maybe you've got it memorized already, the square root of 169 is 13. That's just like saying, I know that 13 squared is 169. You can go forward, you can go backwards. I know that 2 squared is 4. Therefore, I know that 4, the square root of 4 is 2, forward and backwards. Um, so if you, if you plug in root 169 in your calculator, you get 13. You plug in root 100, you get 13 over 10. Okay. Well, does that make sense? Does that work? We're telling ourselves that this should be 13 out of 10. What does that mean? Well, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I ran into my picture here, but it is indeed 13. But it also said out of 10. So what we can deduce from that is that somewhere along the way, the original size of this drawing was only 10 by 10. So let's go 10 this way, 10 the other way, perfect square. So in the original, inside here, there were 100 boxes, but they gave us more than that. They gave us three more here, three more here. Therefore, we have 169 out of 100. The whole point of this, though, was that we were able to work from the answer an area and use square root to get back to 13 over 10. I'm just going to take a quick break now, and I'm going to post another video right after this that's going to start at the next slide. All right, welcome back. Needed a glass of water there. Getting a little hoarse. Uh, okay, so we've just gone through how we can use square root, even using fractions, which don't have to be that scary, uh, to find out what the side length is. Moving on to the next slide. This is a repeat of something I've already said. Square and taking the square root are opposites or inverse operations, like addition and subtraction, or multiplication and division. Okay, they're the opposites. So the side length of a square is the square root of its area. If this is the area, we square root both the top and the bottom, we end up with the side. Same thing with the second example we did. We can also use decimals, all right? If we look at 225 out of 100, if you divide 225 by 100 using a calculator, what you're going to find is, I can find my pen again here. So 225 divided by 100 on your calculator, you're going to get 2.25. And we know that we can represent numbers with decimals and fractions. So you need to recognize that 225 is the exact same thing that's 225 over 100. It just looks different. So if this was a perfect square, what that means is this is a perfect square as well. All right? So 2.25, if you put it on your calculator, is 1.5. That's the square root of 2.25. 1.5, therefore, would be the side length. Well, if we look back to our original equation, 1.5, if you represent it as a fraction, is 15 over 10. And just in case you forget what we were talking about, if I go back here, there it is, 15 over 10. Okay. And the same thing applies here. 169 over 100, if you plug that into your calculator, it's going to be 1.69. If you take the square root of 1.69 on your calculator, you're going to get 1.3. You can trust me on this. Well, 1.3 is really the same way, or it's the exact same thing as 13 over 10. And where did we see 13 over 10? The second example, 13 over 10. So all that's meant to show you is that if we're working with fractions and it's a perfect square, the exact same thing is going to be true when we look at the decimal. Okay, Fractions and decimals, they're related. 
Okay. All right, so taking the square roots of fractions, we're going to get some repeating decimals sometimes. Okay, to determine the side length of the shaded square, take the square root of 1 over 9. Okay, so let's just look at the picture. Again, I, the picture always helps me. <coughs> Excuse me. The picture always helps me. If I look at this picture, I can see there's clearly nine little squares in the bigger square, and there's clearly one ninth of it shaded. All right, so I can just look at this picture right here and say, well, I can tell that the, the side length is one over three. Like there's only one out of three shaded this way, and there's only one out of three shaded this way. All right, but we can also do the math on it. If I take the square root of one over nine, okay, it's one third times one third. Now, again, some people like writing it this way, and if you do, that's fine. I usually take it a slightly different way, and I write this as one, the root of one, sorry, over the root of nine. And you'll get good at memorizing roots and square roots and squares. Well, how am I gonna make uh, one using multiplication of numbers that are the same? Well, one times one equals one. So the square root of one is always one. You'll memorize that pretty quickly. How about nine? How can I make nine using multiplication? I can do nine times one, or I can do three times three. Well, clearly 9 times 1 is not the same number, so it must be 3 times 3, which means the square root of 9 has to be 3. So I got 1 over 3, the same thing they got here. Okay, I just did it in a slightly different method. If I do 1 divided by 3 on my calculator, I get a decimal, and it's 0.3333 repeating, which is represented by this bar. I'm not sure if you can see it, but when you get a, a repeating decimal, what you do is you put a little bar over top of it. It means it goes on forever. So what did this represent? Well, this showed us that we can actually have decimals that repeat forever that are indeed perfect squares or the side of a perfect square. I think that's kind of cool. Next slide, number eight. When the area of the square uh, is one over nine square units, its side length is one third or zero decimal three repeating. Sorry, that's just a slide that repeats exactly what he said on the other page. Okay, now a little terminology, and I've, I've, I've said the word a couple times already, but this is what this, this 1.1 is all about. A fraction in its simplest form, okay, a fraction in its simplest form is a perfect square, that's the term, if it can be written as the product of two equal fractions, all right? The only thing I'm going to add to this is we got to remember that product is multiplication. Should have typed that out instead of trying to write it, okay? Remember that product is multiplication okay, of two equal fractions. And I guess the only other thing I might highlight there is they've got to be equal. Equal numbers, equal fractions, equal decimals, whatever it is we're dealing with. Okay, you can probably guess what's underneath this green square. When a decimal can be written as a fraction that is a perfect square, then the decimal is also, the key word there is also, a, ta-da, perfect square. The square root is a terminating or repeating decimal. Okay, terminating means it stops, repeating means it goes on forever, like that 0 decimal 3333333 we saw before. So we're dealing with perfect squares here. Next example, calculate the number whose square root is 3 over 8. Now this, this isn't testing your math ability as much as it's testing your reading and comprehension ability. Okay, it's not saying it's not saying what's the square of this, or, or it's not saying what's the square root of this. It's saying the square root is this. So calculate the number whose square root is that. We actually have to square this number. So you know what? I probably didn't do a great job of explaining what that is. But if this is the side, what is the area is basically what we're asking. So if this is the side, I'm not going to actually draw it as the fraction, but here's what they're telling us. They're not telling us how much is on the inside. They're telling us that this side is 3 over 8, and they're telling us that this is indeed a square. Well, if it is indeed a square, this is also 3 over 8. So how do I figure out how much is on the inside of a square? Well, we just square the side, which means multiply it by itself. So in this case, we, are going to, we can write it two, two ways. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, Sometimes you'll see it written like this, 3 over 8 to the power of two, and sometimes you'll just see it written as three over eight times itself. 
you're going to get the same answer both ways, okay? 3 times 3, okay? Remember, we're doing multiplication of fractions. Tops times tops, bottoms times bottoms. So top times tops is 9. Bottoms times bottoms is 64. So the answer to this one, if this is the square root, so if this is the side, this is the area. So whatever is in the middle, I'm not drawing all the little blocks, but whatever is in the middle, it's 9 out of 64. Now I'm just going to click this here and hopefully, you like 3 out of 8 units, 3 out of 8 units. Well, look, we got the right answer. Okay. How many of these units okay, are shaded? I'm not counting this one. Okay. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Great. 9 units. And how many of these squares are there total? Again, I don't know why they shaded this one. That's kind of confusing on them. Anyway, there are 64 total squares inside this. So this was just my kind of crappy representation of it. But we got the right answer, right? There's nine shaded out of 64 total. All right, next one. 1. 1.8. Oh, well, okay. Now we got a decimal here. You can work with decimals two ways. You can either turn them into fractions or you can just leave them as decimals, depending on what the question's asking you to do. If I just saw this in my book and it said, this is the square root, here's what I'd do with it. I'd say, well, if that's the square root, that's just like the question before it, I just gotta square it. So you're probably gonna see something like this. 1.8 squared equals whatever it equals, um, but you might also see it, see it written as 1.8, that's a decimal, you did a very good job, times, 1.8, remember you use brackets for multiplication, or you know you might just see it as 1.8 times 1.8. Oh, those all mean the same thing. Well, I really write perfectly, don't I? And what is 1.8 squared? Memory's failing me, but I think it's 3.24. Let's find out. Yoink. Oh, they didn't give us the answer. Okay, well, in that case, let's just do a calculator here and make sure that I'm right. Okay, 1.8 squared. That's the X squared button. That's 3.24. Hey, I was right. Um, but remember, you could also do it the other way. You could also do 1.8 times itself. 1.8 gets you 3.24. Great. Okay, so we've convinced ourselves that no matter how we write this silly thing, it's going to be 3.24. And this is the same thing, right? It's just written three different ways. I just want you to be aware that it might not always look the same, but it always means the same. But what did it mean? What did we figure out? Oh, we already had the side. So what we figured out is this middle part is, and I should probably write this too. Let's not forget this, units squared. Usually if we're doing area, they're going to give us some sort of unit, like a centimeter or a meter or a kilometer or something like that. So what did we really find out in this question? Well, they gave us the side and we had to figure out how much area was in the middle Okay, just picture it as a big rug. Okay, how much carpet do I need to cover this area that's 1.8 units by 1.8 units? Well, I need 3.24 units squared. They didn't give me enough room to write there. Okay, so this is just using square to find the area. All right, is each fraction a perfect square? Explain your reasoning. Uh, when you run into questions like this, you, you, sometimes you got to approach it a couple different ways. If I see a fraction like this, the first thing I say to myself is, ooh, hold on a minute. Okay, first things first. If it's a perfect square, I need to be able to take a square root of the top and a square root of the bottom with, with you know, they have to be integers. It's got to be a number over a number, no decimals, okay? So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, Square root of 8 doesn't work out perfectly. There isn't two numbers that I can multiply um, to get 8 that are the same. I can do 1 times 8. I can do 2 times 4, but none of those are the same, right? So as soon as one of these doesn't work, the whole thing doesn't work, all right? But it's a little tricky because we can always simplify fractions. So you kind of got to, they tried to trick you here. 8 is not a perfect square. I just I just went over the reason why that's true. But... Is there a number I can divide out of both the numerator and the denominator that means this fraction means the same thing but looks a little different? And sure enough, they're both even numbers, which means I can divide the top by 2, and I can also divide the bottom by 2. So what does that look like? Well, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and then 18 divided by 2 is 9. Never forget that if you're dealing with a fraction, okay, 
you can multiply or divide the top by the same number and you don't change it. Okay. So, you know, I'll just, I'll just put a slightly different fraction down here to make it hopefully make a little bit more sense here. I've got half. If I gave you half a chocolate bar, okay, can you picture that? Okay. Now, what happens if I multiply the top by two and the bottom by the same number, two? All right. One times two is two on the top. Two times two is four on the bottom. If I gave you two pieces of chocolate out of the four pieces that I had, would it not be fair to say that I still gave you half of my chocolate bar? It is, right? Two is clearly half of four. And you can keep doing that as much as you want. Let's say I'm, I'll multiply two times eight. And if you do the same thing to the bottom, now I've got 16 over uh, 32. Would you agree that 16 is half of 32? Yes, you would. So this was just an example of, don't forget, you can simplify fractions. They'll mean the same thing. They'll just look a little different. So let's look at the new fraction that we cranked out here. Now we got four over nine. Ah, now it's a new ball game. Because if I look at the four, how am I going to get to four using multiplication of the same number? There's only one way I can do it, two times two. Okay. If I look at the nine, can I make the number nine using multiplication of the same number? I sure can. Three times three. And you can just plug this into your calculator and you find out simply, right? The square root of four, okay, is indeed two. The square root of nine is three. Therefore, okay, this is a perfect square. I'm just going to write PS. It's a perfect square. It didn't look like one at the start, but we got it to this point here where it's four over nine, and then we decided, ah, four is a perfect square and nine is a perfect square. Anytime you find out that the top is a perfect square and the bottom's a perfect square, the whole thing is a perfect square. All right? So 8 over 18 is, in fact, a perfect square. We just had to do a little digging to, to prove it to ourselves. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, 16 over 5. Let's do the same thing. If this is a perfect square, then we need to be able to take the square root of both the top and the bottom and not get decimals okay so this means the square root of 16 over the square root of 5 i always write it that way just to remind myself let's look at the top are there two numbers or is a number is there a number that we can multiply by itself it's got to be the same number to get 16. well how do we make 16 using multiplication we can go 1 times 60 doesn't help 2 times 8 doesn't help 4 times 4, oh, that one helps, <laughs> right? So we can get to 16 by multiplying the same number, right? Well, that's clearly 4 times 4, right? How about 5? Well, now we're stuck. So this one kind of checks out. Whoa! Silly. You silly pen. All right, 4 times 4 can get to 16. So that is a big check mark. like to see that. Let's look at the 5. How are we going to make 5? Using multiplication, we can only do it 1 times 5. And that's it. 5 times 1 doesn't really help us, right? It's just the same thing backwards. So 5 is not a perfect square. We cannot take the square root of 5 and get one number with no decimals. Okay, You can put it in your calculator and do the square root of 5. And sure, you'll get a number. But it won't be an integer. It won't be a number without a decimal. So we can't do the five. So in this case, not a P S, not a perfect square. Okay. And there's no way we can simplify this. Remember how we simplified the other one? We said, well, I can divide them both by two. There is nothing I can take out of 16 using division that I can also take out of five. Five is a prime number, right? So can it go 16 divided by five and get a number that doesn't have a decimal? No. Can't do it. So we're stuck there. That's it. And then the last one is 2 over 9. All right. Well, let's look at this. 2 over 9. So let's just take it a little further. If it's a perfect square, I should be able to take a square root of the top and square root of the bottom and not have decimals in either one. Well, I can see pretty quickly that this one's not going to work, right? Let's go square root of 2 over square root of 9. What are the ways that I can make 2 using multiplication? I can go 1 times 2. That's the only way. Well, that's clearly not the same number. It didn't work. So I know right now that this is not a perfect square. But we can look at the 9 
anyway. And we could see, well, how can I make nine using multiplication of the same number? One times nine doesn't work. Three times, oh, three times three works. Okay. So this part of it would work, the bottom part, but we tried it with the two and there's no two numbers. Or there's no number that we can multiply by itself to get two without decimals. So because one part of it is not a perfect square, then that means the entire thing is not a perfect square. All right. Now I think that's the end of my examples here. Oh no, I got a couple more. Hey, yay. Decimals. How can we forget about decimals? All right. We did fractions. Let's do decimals. Is each decimal a perfect square? Explain your reasoning. Okay. Now use the fraction method and your calculator. This is important. You need to know how to turn a decimal into a fraction. And the way you do that is it's very, very easy. What you do is you write this entire number. Okay. You write this entire number, 625. Ignore the decimal for now. And you put it over, and all you got to do is you go write a one, and then count how many numbers are behind the decimal, and you put that many zeros. That's it. That's easy. Works for every decimal. Okay? You just write all the numbers on top, ignore the decimal for a second, then you put it over one, count the numbers behind the decimal, and put that many zeros. So there's two numbers here, you need to put two zeros there. Okay? So now let's look at the fraction, okay? So if we look at the fraction, we see 625 over 100. Now you can use your calculator for this part, so I don't expect you to know if 625 is a perfect, uh, is, <clears throat> excuse me, is a perfect square or not. Okay, so let's just go 625 on the top, and then I'm gonna write root of 100. Why the root sign? Because I need to check. It needs to be square rooted to a single number for it to be a perfect square. Well, the 100 part is easy because the 100 part is just 10 times 10. So that one checks out. That's awesome. That's easy. Okay, how about the top part, 625? Okay, well, off the top of my head, I can't remember. So I'm going to go to the calculator, and I have a square root button on my calculator. So I'm going to usually have to push the square root button first. I'm going to check on this calculator. Square root of 625. Nope, had it wrong on this calculator. You actually have to put the number first. Square root of 625 oh, is 25. Perfect. Okay, so the square root of 625 is actually, damn it, silly thing. The square root of 625, if my pen were working, would be 25. Why is my pen not working? You silly pen. I think there's a button on my pen that's failing. Okay, well, my pen appears to completely deserted me. So I'm just going to pause the video for a second and try and get it working. Sorry, folks, minor problem there with my uh, tablet software. Hopefully I've got it back here. Where was I? Okay, say the square root of 625 after I typed it into my calculator is, oh, good grief. Yeah, it's caused me problems again. All right, there we go, 25 times 25. Finally, the technology works for me. Um, so if you do 25 times 25, you will get 625. If you did it on your calculator, square root of 625, you get 25 times 25. Ah, check, check, that is a perfect square. Perfect square. Excellent. Okay, let's look at another example. Uh, 0 decimal 627. Well, let's use that exact same trick I used before. I'm going to write the number 627, ignoring the decimal. I'm going to write a 1, and then I'm going to count how many zeros there are. 1, or decimals. 1, 2, 3 decimals. So I have to put 1, 2, 3 zeros. So six, uh, 0 decimal 627 is the same thing as 627 over 1,000. Put it into your calculator if you don't believe me. All right, now let's look at these two numbers here. 1,000, are there two numbers that I can multiply together to get 1,000? Because remember, we have to check this by saying, is there a number that can be multiplied by itself okay, to get to both 1,000 and 627? Well, there's an easy way to check. I don't need that little sign there, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, let's just take our calculator, and just like we did before, let's take the square root 
pull my calculator up here. Let's take the square root of 627. And if it is a perfect square, it should give us a number with no decimals. All right, so 627, the square root of that is... Ugh, ugly number. Okay, so uh, because it's an ugly number, um, no, nope, can't do it. Oh, maybe it was my calculator that was causing the problem. In any case, no, can't do it. Didn't like it. Oh, good grief. I'm sorry, I'm having some serious technical difficulties today, but I'm like 50 minutes into the video and I really don't want to have to record all this again. So you're just going to have to take my... Uh, you're going to take my word for it that 627 does not have a have a perfect square root without a decimal, so it's not going to work. All right, so I checked up my calculator, and hopefully this is working again. Of course it isn't. This did not work on the top. How about the 1,000? Well, I don't want to bring my calculator up again because it's probably going to break my notebook again. Um, but if you if you take the square root of a thousand on your calculator, you're going to get uh, 31 point something or other. So that doesn't work either. So neither the top nor the bottom are perfect squares. Therefore, not a perfect square. All right. So we checked two decimals. One of them was. One of them wasn't. Okay, now you don't need to compare your results to those of your classmates because these were all examples. A couple things to say here. All right, first off, this video was almost an hour long. Believe me, uh, I understand you don't want to listen to me prattle on for an hour every day. I went to a fair amount of detail today and I had some technical difficulties as well. So uh, my goal is to keep the instruction for each uh, unit or section, 1.1, 1.2, etc., to about 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm probably going to move a little bit quicker tomorrow. This should be enough information for you to do the assigned textbook, which was, uh, sorry, I'm just going to bring it up here. Our textbook questions. Thought I had it ready to go. Um, for unit one, 1 1.1, page 11, number four, number five, number seven, two, 11. So that means seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 13, a 14, and 16. I have the PDF of those questions, so I just took it from the from the textbook. Um, there are also the entire textbooks up here, and I've also got all the answers, so you can check your answers after you're done that. Um, just a note about the assignments. If you see a number, you can assume that you have to do A, B, C, D, however many there are. If I just have one letter or two letters, then I only want you to do those. For example, for 13, I've got an A behind it, so I just want you to do 13A. You don't have to do the rest. All right, so that should get us started for the first day, and I look to post another much shorter <laughs> video for you tomorrow for 1.2. If you're having any trouble with the explanations or the tutorial, um, again, feel free to look at Khan Academy, or you can email me and try to ask me a specific question or take a picture of something that isn't quite working for you, and either myself or Ms. Shindelka can... Um, can arrange to uh, to try to dis explain it a different way through a video or send you um, a picture or point you in a direction or even do a one-on-one -on -one with you that hopefully will help you out. All right, have a nice night.